My name is Jesse Swisher. I'm a matrix service technician, and we're going to be going over some of the common issues and solutions on the Morpheus or MVC vertical form fill seal bagger. Most common issue with the Morpheus is product timing and making it so product does not drop in the jaws and get closed in, causing product to fall all over the ground broken bags, et cetera. The way that you control that is if you go into this film pole setting here, you have product timing, which is measured in times 10 milliseconds. What'll happen is the product will get closed in the jaws, as you can see here. So the way I like to do this is I like to start from the very beginning at one, the minimum, and start from there because it lets you know how much delay there actually is in the gap between the scale and the bagger. And you could see it basically fell in the bag, but it was catching it on the tail end. So one of these pieces, when it sprinkles out, it actually gets caught in the top of the bag. Some of them might make it, but some won't. And that's where you'll get bags like this one. I can increase this a little bit. We'll say go up to, I don't know, 20. So an extra 200 milliseconds. And let's try that. And you can see how the product perfectly landed right in the bottom of the bag where the jaws close. So every bag, no matter what speed, is going to be clean with no product in the seal. So the other common issue with the Morpheus is setting up film brand new and setting the correct position for the film pull belts. So they're powered by vacuum. Basically, you have to get the, the belts put in in the proper position. The first step in that is turning off the vacuums. You can see they're at a negative 60 on the pressure gauge. You're going to want to turn that off by twisting this dial here. So now there's no vacuum on the left pull belt. On the right side, do the same thing. Turn it all the way off. The next step is to put the film pull belts in the proper position. So once again, we're going to be in this film pull tab and that gives us control over the motors that control the position of those pull belts. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit this open full button and that's going to open up the pull belts. I'm going to take each side one by one and set each film pull belt separately by jogging in. We'll start with the right side, jogging in to close and then stopping just before it gets to the film. Right about there. So right about there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull on this film and if it moves downward without any back pressure from friction on the belt, then it's not close enough. What I wanna do is I wanna slowly bring in this pull belt by inching it forward incrementally until I can't pull it straight down. All right, so now you can see when I pull it down, there's a lot of back pressure, but if I start scooting it left and right, it loosens. So that's right where we want this. That means once we turn on the vacuum, it's gonna be close enough that it pulls the film without actually rubbing on this part of the forming tube. So realistically, you could put a credit card in there and it would slide through. That's about the gap that you want between the pull belt. And then I would do it for the left side as well. So right here, what's listed is the actual position of this pull belt. This is the position that is saved in the recipe. We had a good recipe beforehand, so this, is, this, this works. But for this purpose, I'm going to write what I have right now. So we're gonna do the same thing to the other pull belt now. All right, now we're gonna find that perfect spot. All right, 
it's starting to pull back on me. All right, there we go. So if I pull down, it's pulling back. But if I move it to the left a little bit, it starts to give up. That's right where we want it. So now I'm going to save this right here as 1.56, as the actual says. And now that is the correct positioning for these pull belts. So now I can go back around and I can turn the air back up to about that negative 60. All right, and then same for the other side. There we go. There's a third dial that was on the other side of the machine. That one is for the vertical seal bar back seal pressure. Basically, to make sure that's correct, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to back seal. I'm going to trigger this open close button. And what that's going to do is it's going to open and close this back seal bar. It's going to push it forward. As I press this button, you can see me trigger it. Now with it forward, I'm going to go to the other side. And I'm going to make sure that it's at the right pressure. All right. It is at the correct pressure. So we want that to stay at 0.15. So another common issue that I find is there's not enough tension on the film from the dancer roller end. So a lot of times, You'll see a customer with, with weights that are set up too high and springs that are too far inward. First thing I do is I take both of the weights and I move them all the way to the end to get maximum tension on this side. And then I come over to the springs and I move these back all the way. Basically, it has as much tension as possible it has enough back pull to keep the film straight the entire time. And then also I set these screw, these stopper screws to about a quarter inch. It's a rough estimate. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I set both of those to about a quarter inch to give the dancer bar enough room to dance. When I pull it all the way up and let it drop, it has enough room to play. And that's pretty much how I set it up from factory. And it's taking care of a lot of issues with film tracking. Another common issue I find is that there's too much slack on these pull belts. Too many times I've come into a customer uh, facility and found that there is more slack on one belt than the other, or the belts are totally falling off. The right spot for maximum tension on these belts is to take one of these black knobs here that basically sets the tension for these. And I essentially bring it all the way up until there is absolutely no friction left. It's, I'm not even touching this. It's just going upward. If I pull this all the way down, it will actually start to force back against me and it will bring this, this wheel downward. And then once you go down for, far enough, it will let, allow you to take the pull belt off, but to get the right tension when they're running, see it's pushing back against me. Oh, and then now I've just lost all friction. So that is where we want it. The final common issue that I find is alignment of the back seal and getting it as close to the film as possible until that band stops moving and you pull it back and that'll give you the proper position for your back seal. So I'm gonna start with the left and right position. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up the back seal bar. I'm gonna to go to back seal. I'm gonna hit that open and close button again. And once again, that's gonna open up this into its extended position. I'm going to take the film and align it kind of like this. And then you can see right here, I've only kind of hunched down on the left side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to adjust this by loosening this and scooting it over to the right a little bit. 
and then locking it down again, making sure that it's parallel here. Left to right has been aligned, so I'm going to reattach. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring, with this button still in the closed position, so the bar's still in the closed position, I'm going to bring this vertical seal bar in until the, the band stops moving. All right, the band here is not moving, so it's trying to move it, but it can't really move it anymore. So it's too close. So I'm just going to increment it open until it starts moving again. Now you can see it's moving again. So now I'm just going to tube the bag a little bit. And you can see that we have a good back seal here.